stories have retained a legend about village girls who competed during the evenings in blowing the maiden horn. They each tried to make the sound of the horn more beautiful and powerful than their rival, to find a melody which would be so unique that by it the player could be guessed. Early one morning a girl came to the village meadow and blew the horn so that it sounded far over the fields. Everyone knew that it was time for her to get married. Today we have not come in vain to the village of Togre Marco, Republic of Mariel, near the river Volga. This region is known for its well-preserved customs and unique folk culture. It's Friday morning, the morning of the wedding day. The bridegroom has to let the village know about his upcoming wedding at dawn so that the neighbors and relatives have time to prepare themselves and put on their national costumes. It's also interesting to note that the number of wedding guests is counted by the number of women, or to be more exact, wives. Unmarried persons are not asked to attend the party. The bride is gathered by an odd number of women, so that with the bride there should be an even number of guests. As we have already mentioned, the wedding begins on Friday, because Friday is a good day. The whole village has been preparing for the wedding for a long time, and it is difficult to wait for the start of the party. The guests arrived at the bridegroom's house with presents and good wishes, and money is also put on the plate. Since ancient times, our women have decorated their clothes and headgear with silver coins. Silver is a defense against the evil eye. In addition, it also has a sacred meaning. Twenty to thirty years ago, the price of silver rose so high that most of the ornaments were sold. Fortunately, the custom of wearing ornaments cannot be sold. Nowadays, they are simply made of aluminum. The wedding dishes are prepared by the bridegroom's relatives. Among our national dishes, three-layered pancakes are essential. They are baked and are made of rye and wheat flour. In some places, the ability of the young wife is estimated by the taste of these pancakes. We also consider cottage cheesecakes as necessary wedding fare, which we use to decorate the wedding bread that is presented to the young couple. Our wedding customs are complicated and they have different stages. The wedding procession is led by the host, the Suenvui in the Lamari language. Usually he is the bridegroom's uncle. The Suenvui feeds the guests and leads them from one house to another. There is another important figure whose rank I can't distinguish, maybe the best man, whose role was filled by the bridegroom's elder brother. He should always be with the groom as guardian and he should be the first to enter the bride's house. Returning from there he will declare loudly the arrival of the young couple to the groom's parents. The elder sister of the groom and her husband stay with the bride and help her to conduct the various wedding customs.
Lizavush is the younger brother of the groom who guards the wedding procession. He wears a scarf tied over his shoulder and carries a nominal whip as symbols of power. It's his first dance that starts the party. One thing to note, the men are the first to sit at the table and the women come only afterwards. This is a patriarchal custom from the distant past when the role of the woman was to give birth and to care for the home. Feminism has not yet reached the area. The bride's elder sister feeds the men who fetch the bride. The men are full of power and swear not to disgrace the groom's family. It is known that in ancient times the head of the family read a prayer at this moment. Good and great God, great creator, mother of the tribe, today begins the wedding. It's God's order to marry. We have gathered the people and we will go to fetch the bride. Let our way be fair and safe. Musician, musician, take out your squiffer. The better the music, the more we want to sing. Drummer, drummer, help us to dance. So at last the bride fetcher set out. The men are at the head of the wedding procession. They walk backwards so that they can guard the procession against the evil eye and evil powers. The content of the wedding procession is also regulated by old customs. At the head of the procession is the host with his wife, and after them, the godfathers and mothers. The Savush comes at the very end with the singers and dancers. Before reaching the village, the procession stops. This is a sign for the group at the bride's home, to let them know ahead of time that the guests have arrived and to make certain everything is ready. Long before this, many curious onlookers have gathered near the bride's house. Even before reaching the bride's home, the Zavush makes a dancing circle out of the wedding procession where guests try to outdance each other. Soon, soon we will arrive. Prepare the food. We bring you the groom. Get the bride ready. The pagan customs still live among us. Their authenticity has not vanished yet. Our nature is still alive. We can and must talk to it. 
A girl in love goes to the sacred grove and ties an embroidered scarf to the branch of a tree. Her whole life has been embroidered into the scarf in symbols and signs. Each sign has a meaning and an objective. Even a stranger can learn the girl's family and birthplace from these signs. Then the girl asks the tree fairy to have mercy on her and to bring her the love of her beloved. Three times the Zerush steps into the bride's house before receiving permission for the procession to enter. The host must pay a ransom for the bride. Only then is the bride taken out to the gates where the groom can take his place beside her. The relatives of the bride receive the young couple with beer and bread decorated with cottage cheese, then ask them to enter. The men are the first to come in through the gate, backwards. At the gate, the procession has already begun to dance for the bride and groom. In return, the relatives of the bride give everyone food and drink. Mead made of honey and pollen is still held in great honor here. Women come to the bride's yard with funny songs that are often composed spontaneously. Oh, you silly girls who want to marry, think before you do it, so that there won't be tears and regret afterwards. Upon entering the house, the women have to praise the groom and also the beauty and diligence of the bride. The horse bow is decorated with flowers. Under the bow, a silver bell rings. We need a bride whose voice is as a silver bill and whose face is as beautiful as a flower. Here in the bride's yard, the groom's elder sister begins the dance. A fluffy pillow in her hands is a symbol of plenty in the young couple's life. Only after this dance can all the other guests dance too. Naturally, the same rule applies here as in the groom's house. Men sit at the table first. We still believe in witchcraft and the evil eye. He who asks the others to drink with him must drink first himself. The drink is safe then, it has not been bewitched. The young couple feeds the guests and asks them to drink to their health. The Zavush won't drink before they have kissed. The 
longer the kiss, the greater the love. The guest count allowed how long the kiss lasts. Only now can the Zavush accept the drink and perform his dance. The bride's grandmother has begun the sacred and mysterious blessing of the young couple. May your life be as bright as the morning sun. May fate guard you from evil tongues and may people talk well about you. The godfather covers the bride's head with a scarf. She cannot take it off before reaching the groom's house. There the groom must pull from the edge of the scarf three times. Only then is the ritual performed the right way. The pagan faith and Christianity have been intertwined by us. Some people also call our paganism natural faith. Our wedding customs use rites barred from both religions which meld smoothly into each other. At this wedding the groom is a pagan but the wife is an Orthodox. In order not to offend the other party, the Orthodox ceremony is held at the bride's home. The gifts we make for each other are also an ancient custom at our weddings. The godmother receives a scarf as a gift. To prevent the bride's younger sisters from remaining unwed, they make a circle and walk around the table, and then out of the yard. An intrusion from the regulations of today's profane world. The wedding procession goes to the village council to register the marriage. In ancient times there was an important and mysterious ritual. The young couple and the closest relatives went to the sacred grove where a cart, a village sage, had been invited. The cart sacrificed a bird to the gods to ensure that the young couple's life would be happy. The bird could be a goose or a duck, depending on the god's gender. The bird was brought to the sacred grove, bound in a scarf and was left on the branches of a tree. A message for the gods. Other guests were not allowed to see the sacrifice. the couple were orthodox, the procession went to the church. Unfortunately, the village secretary is a poor surrogate for the splendid church weddings of times past. Weddings that take place in an everyday workroom can't be considered a folk custom. But the fact that a representative of the authority speaks the Mari language is unique and festive and compensates for all the bureaucracy. Now it is spring in your hearts, but then follows summer, autumn, winter, 
your hair will turn gray and your faces will become wrinkled. Are you ready to get married knowing all of that? Oh, what do we need the village council for if we have such a splendid young couple and the wedding party is in full swing? The official registration is finished. Now the whole procession goes back to the starting point, to the groom's home. The groom's mother receives the young couple with bread and cottage cheesecake. But before they reach the yard, the godmother puts down a roll of cloth and a pillow that, as we have seen already, signifies well-being and safety in the young couple's life. In ancient times, the wedding party lasted for three days running. Now we have to finish in two days. On the second day of the wedding, the bride bakes pancakes with three layers and feeds her closer relatives. It is said that after the wedding, the mysterious maiden horn was not played anymore. The maiden horn was left to wait for following generations. <laughs>